Hi, in this video I want to discuss um, reaching conclusions and how you can reach conclusions and how you reach conclusions and I guess I give a little story about myself and how I reach my conclusions. Um, like I mentioned before, I reached my conclusions more perceptually through um, life predispositions and experiences, uh, predispositions of whatever it may be, intelligence or my experience of having predispositions of maybe some kind of psychological issue or whatever it may be. And obviously that shed light on not only my own issues but also the issues of life and how that can obviously be an unbearable mess when you realize that there's only so much you can do to prevent so much um, from happening and you realize obviously once you realize I wouldn't want this to happen to me you feel like you're helpless when you see it happen to so many other people and there's only so much you can do about it in many cases that's a very good opening point in realizing this stuff but sometimes you don't even realize exactly why you're thinking a certain way even if the idea is very obvious you see, you realize it, but you don't even realize where it came from. And not only that, you don't even realize fully entirely what you're thinking in the full context. You realize, but you're trying to find an answer to why things are that way when you realize you found the answer and the answer is not satisfying enough. And that's the ultimate problem. There is no answer beyond the answers why things are this way. You just see things for what they are. And once you see things for what they are, it is a painful thing to realize that there's nothing beyond those answers. There's nothing beyond the curtains that you're experiencing. You've already looked beyond the curtain. And once you realize you're just going to see another curtain beyond the curtain, that becomes the answer. And you keep on wondering, instead of wondering, well, what's behind the curtain? I want to know why this curtain is behind this curtain, this curtain is behind this curtain. I realize it, but you're stuck in that redundant cycle of trying to look at the curtain beyond the curtain. But it's just another curtain, and it's about realizing, I'm just keep on looking at curtains. I already have the answers. I'm just not satisfied with them. Like I mentioned before, um, it all comes down to your silly animalistic human psychology of wanting to keep on satisfying an answer. You keep on wanting more answers based on whatever kind of internal logic like I mentioned before that you keep on wanting to answer. You want some kind of final conclusion based on final conclusions that you've had. Okay, yes, bread is bread. You want some kind of answer with that, but that's the answer you already have. Bread, um, white bread is white. You want an answer like that. White bread is white. Or a computer is a computer or um, or dachshund is a dog. You want some kind of answer like that. Um, you want something, you want an answer where it's not exactly the same answer, but you realize you've already answered the answer. Um, you've already received the answer, um, and you're always just looking for an, um, another, um, an addition. You want another addition. And when you realize you want another addition, sort of like how you think every time you. You, you ask a question every time you open the, the gates of knowledge you're just going to keep on finding more questions to answer we already know the function that's why I, I mentioned this before yes you can keep on asking once you know that the person went to the store you can ask well why do they go to the store how do they go to the store you can you ask keep asking those questions but those questions are ultimately frivolous because I like I mentioned before real, reality explains itself and the questions are often irrelevant because it's a function we can understand and ask those questions, but they're irrelevant to the full um, meaning. But the meaning that I'm, that I'm talking about is the meaning of the function of existence, not individual circumstances. Even individual circumstances of who, what, when, where, why. Like um, the ultimate circumstance of death um, for all meaning or whatever it may be of value is the annihilation of all living life on earth. It doesn't matter how you achieve it. It just matters that you've achieved it. Like the feeling matters. It's not how you have the feeling. It's not that he how he got to the store. It's that he got to the store and got whatever he got. The means to an end don't mean anything. It's the end that matters. Obviously, it's not always worth going through a bunch of means to get to the end, but it's the end that matters um, in the end, um, generally speaking. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, so yes, I mean, you're just looking beyond the curtains. You want more curtains. You want more curtains. You want to keep finding something more and more and more and more. There's only so much you can look at. And it's about realizing the curtain behind the curtain is the answer. And once you realize that, you can stop going through each curtain to find another curtain or begging for the curtain, begging the question, where's the next curtain? What's the next curtain? Is there another curtain behind here? You keep on contriving. Well, you can say, okay, well, since I know there's, I don't know, since I've been so used to the redundancy, can I just ask the question of a mystery? A mystery. I wonder if there's going to be another curtain beyond the curtain. The only mystery you can apply to life is the mystery of what's going to happen tomorrow. What am I going to eat tomorrow? Is someone going to call me tomorrow? I don't know. What's going to happen? Circumstances that are relevant to the full function of the meaning of what we find um, to be something that we can apply to the function, like I mentioned, it's the function. 
Now, it doesn't matter if someone calls you tomorrow. It doesn't matter any of that. It's the feeling that you get from the call, and that's the ultimate value that we can apply, and that's where the mystery of everyday occurrences don't mean anything. It's a matter that there's no more mystery beyond the curtain that you see, and the curtain is, there's a curtain, and the writing on the curtain is, life is bad. Life suck. Life suck. Zero-sum game. You're satisfying your desires, and there's desire. Without desire, there's no satisfaction. Without sa with satisfaction, there's no desire. You're parasiting, you're reproducing pointlessly to experience a single redundant processes of rejection of your desires based on just satisfying your pretensions to begin with. It's all pointless, it's all silly, it's all stupid, it doesn't serve any function or purpose beyond being, uh, putting harmables in harm, harm's way and having those harmables escape that harm and prevent that harm by learning lessons to avoid the harm to begin with. It's going to give you a little saying along the same lines as that. It's going to say, well... If you want to look beyond the next curtain, see if anything's changed, you go right ahead. You know, continued, and it's going to be continued, and it's just going to say the same thing on the next curtain. And the next curtain, and the next curtain. Open the blinds, you see more blinds, and more blinds, and more blinds. You know, like sort of like the infinite regression thing, where you have like, you look through the mirror, or you have a like a phone or something, or whatever you call those things. And you, you, you see it, and it starts moving back and forth, and it looks like it's never ending, or whatever it is. I don't know what you call those things. Um, but, um... The never-ending window paradox, or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, it's one of those kinds of things, um, but only it's real. But it's a real only, metaphorically speaking. Um, it's not a real physical thing because it doesn't exist physically. Um, but it's physically it, it exists as a um, existence because there's really only one curtain, and that's the end. There's a curtain, but metaphorically speaking, you could say infinite curtains, and it's just going to keep saying the same thing. But behind the curtains, just a blamed wall. A bland wall, and there's nothing beyond the wall. But even if there was something beyond the wall, it's just going to read right back to where you are now. Like the Earth, it's a sphere. You go around the Earth, you come right back, and you're right back at the wall you, you started at. You climb over the wall, you go around, and you're right back at the wall where you started at. Um, you can only go in circles. <laughs> is the main point as well. You can only go in circles, and the circles you go in are leading nowhere because you're only going one step you take over the wall is one step closer to the wall you just came from. So that's all the ultimate thing. <laughs> I guess to gather from this is that you're just going in circles. It doesn't do anything. It's just doing the same old thing. You're going in circles. There's barriers. There's boundaries. And the boundaries create the circles that you're existing in. And the circles you're existing in prove not only that you're walking in circles, but you're existing in circles based on the pain that you're satisfying. And the fact that you do it over and over and over again. You're chasing your own tail. You're avoiding the negative and you're running away from the negative. You're chasing your wants and your, your desires, but you never reach them. And even if you do reach them, you're still going around in a circle because you're running away. You're wanting your desire and you're running away from the pain. You're, you're constantly running around, avoiding the serial killer. You're, you're running from place to place just to avoid the serial killer. And yet you're not thinking about the fact that, obviously, I'm going here. To, I'm, I'm going to the grocery store not to buy food, but to avoid starving. I'm not going there to satisfy, oh, my ab absolute, my, my tasty, my, 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 um, my, I'm not going there to just satisfy my taste buds. I'm going there to avoid starving, avoid the serial killer before I go into the next place and satisfy my need for a shelter, my need for whatever it may be. There's obviously you just keep on going and going based on your needs and your wants. Um, you know, the same analogy can be applied to Christmas, your birthday. On your birthday, you're the furthest away from your birthday the next year. Um, the one day after your, the one step closer to the, the next year where you go around in the same old redundant process of doing it, and obviously you, you finally do that and you reach the end. So obviously those are all um, relevant things. So yeah, um, what else is there to mention? I don't know. So yes, your recognition, perceptual. So recognition can become intellectually, you can be convinced. A lot of things can come up and you can be convinced over a period of time. Um, I would say for me, it happened gradually over the course of my entire life. Um, I've always had weird experiences. And like I've mentioned in some other videos, I've had some experiences myself. Um, weird pseudo-psychological, physio-psychological physio experiences. Um, but not like being high, but weird feelings of weirdness. <laughs> um, 
But of course, I'm assuming you'll obviously find some way to relate to that. Um, anyway, um, yes, recognition can be perceptual first, it can be intellectual, it can be emotional. Your emotions can create a perception which can let you know, allow you to become to an intellectual um, conclusion. Um, and obviously, like I mentioned before, it's best to come to an intellectual conclusion best because it doesn't get to you as much. Well, like, you don't let the emotions of, say, a religious doctrine get in the way or whatever delusion you have because they, generally speaking, emotionally, they're emotionally distressing. That's why you emotionally react. If a person has schizophrenia, they emotionally react to every time they feel like someone's controlling their mind or the FBI is after them, the cliche thoughts you have. It's an emotional reaction, emotional negative feeling. And obviously those things are often, in many cases, your emotions are the things that matter, but they're also the things that cause the most problems. They're the ir irrational things. The irrational thing is the only thing that has meaning, but your intelligence has meaning because it controls that emotional state. So your intelligence is something that you should intellectually understanding the truth is better than emotionally and having that lead to um, an intellectual understanding. So it's best about just to intellectually understand than to emotionally understand leading to an intellectual understanding. So it's best to go through less pain to know the truth than to go through more pain to know the truth. It's better to learn your lesson early on than to learn it later when it already seems almost too late to learn your lesson. So yeah, I mean I don't know if there's really anything else to uh, mention. So recognition first, intellectual, perceptual, and um, emotional perception. I think I've mentioned the distinction before, emotional, perceptual, and intellectual <laughs> distinctions between um, whatever you're feeling and whatever you're... Yeah, I guess another thing I want to mention is your feelings are the thing that matter. Like the two steps would be deprivation and the other kind of pain you experience. Um, the deprivation is two steps. Your want, based on a deprivation, is two steps. While the overt pain of having, say, something like a nail shoved to your uh, foot, as opposed to um, you want to get directly out, it goes directly to the deprivation, the pain, as opposed to the um, experience of, um, you know, being hungry. You have to go through the hunger, the deprivation, satisfying it to escape the pain. All you're doing is escaping pain. A greater pain, a pain, not the pain you haven't even reached its full potential yet. Um, something that can kill you, and the full potential would be probably ultimately your death, um, as opposed to something like having a foot, a overt pain, where it's it ultimately just immediately about just eliminating the pain, as opposed to satisfying something based on the deprivation, um, which requires an intake as opposed to say a releasing or a um, elimination. So it's preventing more and when you're eating, say, satisfying hunger, it's about preventing more pain from happening. While um, um, having this is about eliminating the pain you already have, um, say, like a nail through your foot. So it's, it's, it has more value when you're eliminating a nail through your foot than satisfying, say, a hunger. Um, when the hunger hasn't even reached its full potential yet. And that's why often more overt pains take precedence over, say, something that's less overt because it's not immediately reached its potential yet. Because the potential is a little more obscure with something like a hunger because it's about eliminating more pain because it's a deprivation based on a tension that's building up in you. As opposed to, say, a nail that's going through your foot that's obviously reached its full potential and it's about eliminating the full potential that you already know right now. And that's another part of the one-two step because you jump to the full step and you already know the full potential and it's already an overt pain and it's not a deprivation as opposed to the two steps. You're trying to prevent more pain. Um, and sometimes it's about just preventing pain to begin with or suffering or whatever it is. So obviously that's another distinction you can use. Um, so like obviously I was mentioning your emotions, your feelings are the irrational things, but those are the things that matter. While the intel, intel, intelligence doesn't have any matter but to solve problems that are created by your emotions. So it's about this constant battle between your intel, intelligence and your emotions based on your perceptions and projections and your feelings. Um, so your feelings are the thing that matter. Like the, you know, in, intelligence matters by way as a byproduct of emotions because your intelligence, in many ways, is a good way to gauge and control your emotions, um, to intellectually recognize that you need to control something. But it means something like I mentioned before with the feeling thing and the deprivation. It's two steps with the intelligence as opposed to the ones of the feelings. Feelings have the direct meaning, while the intelligence only has meaning because there are emotions. There are only problems to solve because there are sentient beings. So that's where the intelligence has its meaning. So it doesn't have its meaning unless there's those things to solve.
If there's no feelings, then there's nothing to solve because there's nothing in the universe to solve. If there's no thing interacting with it and having a feeling, to having a feeling a certain way and to relatively change that feeling or to maintain a certain position or feeling that you're having or that something else is having. So if there's no value based on the feeling, then there's no point in having an intelligence. If there's no value based on, if there's no feeling, there's no value, then there's no need for an intelligence. And intelligence means nothing if there's no value because the intelligence to figure out what's going on in the universe, the answers are only meaningful because the feeling is the only thing that means anything in this, has any reasonable answer in, in this universe. It's the only thing worth knowing in the universe. Knowing how many particles are here or there or nothing mean nothing unless it has to control, has any kind of control over a feeling thing. And it only means something at this point perceptually because we feel like we're going to solve some kind of scientific, um, you know, this find some scientific discovery where we find out how many particles are in this, that, and the other thing. And that's the only thing, way that something like science is relevant because it feels like we're going to change a sentient being, the sentient experience, and make it better for the sentient being. And that's the only way that has any meaning. Um, that's the only way it has any kind of meaning at all, is, um, is it has an effect on a sentient being. And since sentient beings are in this universe, um, obviously it means something because um, everything is interacting with, each, interacting with each other. And since there's sentient beings in this universe, it all means something if it has an interaction. If there's a sentient being, it has a meaning. And obviously, like the interactions it has, um, we're byproducts of those interactions, and they mean something if they're affecting a sentient being. So it all means something that way. But like I was mentioning before, going back to this um, same example, yes, our feelings, our intelligence is to solve the feeling, our, our sentient feeling condition. And that's the only thing that our intelligence is solving, is the sentient experience. There's nothing else that this sentience is um, controlling. The sentient experience is... Um, um, being controlled by the feelings, but our intelligence is to solve the problems that our feelings create. Without those feelings, there'd be no need for the intelligence, like I mentioned before already. So anyway, I don't want to go too long on this subject, but that's the basic idea. It's an important subject, an important distinction to make when it comes to sentient feelings and sentient creatures, and how we come to conclusions, intellectual, intellectual conclusions, and emotional, perceptual conclusions. So. Anyway, if I have anything else to mention on the subject, if I missed anything, I can mention it in another video. So, anyway, thank you, and until next time, bye.